Okay, as part of the PSC motor uh, playlist I'm doing, I have a 1 6 horse motor here. Running load amps is 2.9. Okay, now this is a PSC motor, it's a permanent split capacitor motor. And I kind of want you to look at how this motor works on an oscilloscope. Now an oscilloscope uh, isn't anything special, it's just a graphic representation of electricity. And let's show you what we're thinking about with this uh, oscilloscope. Okay, most of you guys have seen some sort of representation of this here. That is a sine wave. Now I'm showing power. The motor's not hooked up or anything. I'm showing power coming in. We're at 60 cycles and so on. Uh, and that is the sine wave that comes into the power. This is 120 volts. Now, when we put a motor in here, we start getting some odd things. Most of you have heard of back EMF. So what the heck is back EMF? Well, if you look down at this motor, there are windings in that motor. There's a rotor in the motor. It's an induction motor, so the windings induce power into the rotor. And that begins the operation of the motor. But, all motors are generators, all generators are motors. So if I run a motor, there is also a generator in here. And it generates back EMF, electromotive force, it's a voltage. It stacks on top of the voltage that you would normally see in here and reduces its amperage. This is one of the odd things about back EMF. Back EMF creates a uh, resistance to flow. And we call this inductive reactance. When we energize a motor, we, when it starts, we get back EMF. Now, if you've ever taken an ohm reading of a motor and attempted to determine its amperage draw by the resistance, you'll find the amperage draw will be massively higher than it actually is. The reason it's not that high is back EMF. It's pushing back. It's an opposite uh, electromotive force, and it's trying to slow the electricity, not slow it, but reduce the amount of electricity that can get through. So, when I hook up a motor and it starts, it immediately, you know, it starts at a higher amperage draw than it runs. When it gets running, the amperage draw reduces. That's a back EMF pushing back. I found an odd little thing when I started fooling with this motor. And I get a sine wave like this, you know, our little old sine wave there, before the motor starts. But I've got another probe on this that's not just checking the uh, sine wave coming in like that. It's going to check the back EMF. And that goes between the common, which would be generally white, and the capacitor, which is the start winding. The start Between the start winding and the common is back EMF is produced, or at least most of it is. And I found something happen here that kind of blew me away. I thought there was something wrong with the oscilloscope. But I found out since that there's nothing wrong with the oscilloscope. So let's see what happens 
when I fire this motor up, and I've got, see now I've got two channels on this thing. This is the channel of the power coming in. And I'm going to put another channel in there that is on that start winding. And let's see what happens. I'm going to turn on the motor. The motor's going to be running. And I'm going to have two sine waves on there. Okay. I still have this one sine wave right here, which was the power coming in. But I've got a second one, and it's huge. See, this is 120 volts right here. But this other sine wave comes up, and it's actually exceeded the voltage that the oscilloscope can, uh, can show. That's back EMF. It gets very high on these things. Okay, why am I showing you this? <laughs> well, I'm going to put a voltmeter up here and show you what the back EMF is in this thing in a minute. And it's going to exceed the voltage of many of the capacitors used on these motors. Okay, right here is a capacitor for this motor. It's 5 microfarads at 370 volts AC. Okay, if you look here, I've got a voltmeter set up on this thing, and I'm going to check the voltage between the start and the common. Now, note the voltage. I thought my, there was something wrong with my meter. It's 435. There's 435 volts between start and common. Of this motor while it's running. Okay, what's that mean? It means I hadn't set my oscilloscope up wrong. It means the back EMF is very, very high. Why is it very, very high? Let's take a look at this motor. Okay, the motor's running, but there's no load. I don't have any load in this thing. If the motor has a very low load, then the back EMF is very, very high. Now essentially what I think is happening here, and this is something that I just have to guess on, I guess, is because the motor has no load, it's going to tend to want to spin faster. As it spins faster and exceeds its normal RPM, then the back EMF is going to increase and actually slow down its speed. That's what I think is happening. Anybody else has an idea? I'd love to hear it. Now I'm going to hook this motor up in a blower and we're going to see what difference it makes in back EMF when it's under load. Okay. Once you know it, I put the same motor on a blower. It, actually, it's a blower it normally came in. So I'm going to have a load on this motor. In fact, it's going to be loaded very heavily because it's open. Now, if you look at some of my other videos on fans, when a fan is subjected, a fan, squirrel cage fan like this is subjected to zero static pressure, back pressure, then it draws more power because it moves more air. Uh, let's take a look at what happens with that back EMF. Okay, now I'm going to start this blower up and look for the red sine wave. That's the capacitor, or not the capacitor, but the, uh, the start winding to common back EMF. And you can see it starts out lower than the voltage coming into the motor. Now it's higher. It is not a phase. I think the winding is what puts most things out of phase. But you can see that back EMF has gone up. Let's do a voltage test on that. Okay, now we have the voltmeter set up. We're going to fire it up again. See that red one go up. Let's see what the voltage is. 
Okay, it's 207, 208. Okay? Now, the voltage did go down, didn't it? A lot. And you can see that by the sine wave. It went down because it's under load. Let's reduce the load on the motor. Okay, now I'm going to block off airflow. Let's watch that back EMF. Blocking it off, blocking it off, blocking it off. The farther I block it off, the higher it goes. So less load is going to put higher back EMF. That means the motor's actually traveling faster. And we'll do a voltage test on that too. Now I'm going to start blocking off the airflow. See, the more I block it off, the higher it goes. See, we're well past the 370 volts that that's supposed to take, the capacitor is supposed to take. So, as I let it out again, it drops. Mostly because the speed of the motor is increasing when I block it off. Okay, amp draw goes down but back EMF goes up and that tends to reduce the amperage draw of the motor. More restriction, less restriction. And you can see the sine wave back there changing back and forth too each time. That's just a little something about these uh, PSC motors uh, and the way they work. That uh, back EMF is what is reducing the amp draw of the motor when there's less air moved or less resistance to its rotation. See, every time I move this, it goes back and forth. And as that, uh, that motor slows down because there's more air moved, then the back EMF goes down. Okay, hope this one makes sense.